Welcome to Short Waves Lasting Impact. Mark Serber alongside Dr. Cavallero, and this is part two of moral injury. The first part was about veterans, those who are, are serving our nation, and also uh, police officers and those on the front lines. Um, this time, we're going to be talking about health workers and the moral injury that they face uh, every day, as well as certainly during the pandemic. Um, Dr. Cav, uh, for those who may not have tuned into part one, can we just start off talking about what exactly moral injury is, and then we'll get into how it affects healthcare workers? Yeah, absolutely. So moral injury can occur when somebody engages in or fails to prevent or witnesses an act that deeply conflicts with their values or their beliefs. So really changes their moral compass. So this can be related to you making decisions that affect the survival of others or not preventing a negative outcome. Um, and again, these acts are something that really violate your deeply held moral compass. And this can also include experiencing a significant amount of betrayal from leadership or commanding officers as well. Um, again, also leading to a very negative outcome or life-threatening life outcome to others. And so as we transition to how it will affect those who are, or healthcare workers, some of the decisions that they have to make, it could be taking orders um, from a, 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 a head surgeon or somebody who makes that decision that you then have to follow, um, especially you know, going back to the pandemic when there were mm -hmm. more people um, than there were doctors to care for them um, in hospitals. And so a lot of decisions like that had to be made. Definitely. And that's why this topic is getting a little bit more attention. Again, as we mentioned in part one, moral injury is a bit controversial because it's not an actual diagnosis like PTSD, even though they often co-occur. Um, PTSD is in our Diagnostic Statistical Manual of Mental Health Disorders, where moral injury is not. In moral injury, when you experience something of this magnitude, it leads to these feelings of just absolute moral distress related to guilt, shame, disgust, um, also a lot of feelings of anger and resentment to, you know, why did this happen? It shouldn't have happened. And it creates a, a long lasting psychological, spiritual, and behavioral impact that really changes people's lives as a result of these experiences. And can you give us uh, some examples, please, of, of where um, moral injury might occur, uh, especially for healthcare workers during the pandemic? Right. So like you mentioned, during the pandemic, there were far more patients than people could possibly manage. And so what we were seeing in the pandemic is people had to, healthcare workers had to decide and triage who gets care and who doesn't, um, which is a a, a terrible experience when you're having to be confronted with this decision and, and like, who am I treating? Am I treating the person who needs the most help or am I treating the person with the highest chance of survival? Now, sometimes for these healthcare workers, it, it is up to them. And if we look at uh, the post from psychology today in 9-11, the frontline medical workers there, they had to choose, you know, who, who do I, to I help? And in that situation, a lot of the medics there were helping the person who had the greatest chance of survival. Um, in, you know, in a hospital, it's looking at what resources do we have available? Do we have enough ventilators? We don't have enough beds. And now um, you're bringing in people working double shifts. And another thing that came up that was a morally injurious event for many people is how people died. Right. Um, so not being able to see their family members and the nurses being the only people allowed in the room with their loved ones and family members when they did pass away because they couldn't get enough care or because at the time we just didn't know uh, what we know now and how to effectively treat the COVID-19 pandemic in these conditions. So how can uh, doctors and first responders who've gone through these ordeals begin to recognize that they may be suffering from moral injury? Yeah, two of the biggest uh, indicators are number one, avoidance, right? So you're feeling ter about, terrible about yourself, the decisions you've made, um, and you start avoiding 
work as much as possible. Maybe you're showing up late. Maybe you're calling out more. Uh, you're not talking to your coworkers or you're walking around constantly frustrated. So very stressed. Uh, looks a lot like burnout, right? For many people um, could also look a bit like depression because you're feeling hopeless about being able to help people, which is why you got into the field in the first place, you're feeling helpless about how to help people on this mass scale. So you see those withdrawal symptoms. And again, like I had mentioned in the previous one, overworking. A lot of people will just put all of themselves into their work as a way to just avoid those thoughts and those feelings that come up because you have these deeply negative thoughts about yourself and about the world, your, your trust in others. Um, is shaken and your trust in your faith or whichever spiritual identity that uh, you subscribe to um, is also shaken as well. I have to feel that in, in this profession too, overworking might be trying to overcompensate or to correct or, or make it so that you can sleep at night by by trying to, to do as much as you can to kind of... Um, you know, say, well, at least I'm trying to compensate for, for, for the mistake that I made. Right. If I, if only, if only I could do more, if I could take care of more people, if I could save more people, that'll help. And, it, and in some ways that can help create more positive feelings for you, but it also perpetuates that avoidance and you're not confronting mm -hmm. the real problem, right? Because you're so focused on what's ahead of you that again, you continue to avoid the, the problem in the first place or the situation that happened that is eliciting this. And so when these healthcare workers realize that they may be suffering from moral injury, what are the steps uh, that they need to take in order to help themselves to get better and to break the cycle of these thoughts and feelings and uh, remunerations of replaying those scenes uh, over and over again in their mind? The first step is always talk to a coworker, and especially in the healthcare field, there's normally several colleagues there that you can reach out to that that understand exactly what you're going through. Um, so getting that support in the workplace can be that first step. And again, it can feel like, okay, I can talk to this person. This person understands the experience, right? They're not going to be as judgmental. And, and they can also, in a way, give you that reality check of, you know, I feel this way, this is all my fault. And when you share that with your coworker, they can say, well, no, this is not your fault. This is not something you can, you could control, right? Here's all the reasons why, <laughs> like, we know this. Um, but when you experience such a difficult event, your your reality gets really skewed, and you start seeing everything really through this dark lens. And it, it's like, wearing these black glasses everywhere and it just filters all the information that you get. So instead of being able to see things objectively, when you're interacting in all these situations moving forward, you're seeing all the ways that you're a bad person. And again, they're often not true. So this is where talking to somebody can really help that, it really helps shift that, per, uh, that perspective. And sometimes um, if you're, talking to a colleague, they aren't mental health professionals. So they don't always know how to help and that's okay. So if you are that colleague, that support, it's important to recognize this is out of my wheelhouse. I, I really want to be here to support you and listen to you. And, you know, I think this is something better suited for a mental health professional. Of course, one of the best things that we could always do as colleagues is really just listen, reduce the advice giving, and again, recognize kind of your limits. And if it's, um, again, too much for you to handle, just say, you know, I, I don't really know if I can listen to the, the details of this story and I want to be able to support you. You know, let's talk about ways that we can get you the support that you need. Uh, so sometimes that's going to your EAP, right, your employee assistance program, or sometimes it's going to psychology today and the find a therapist because uh, they have a therapist finder that you can locate through whether it's insurance, location, telehealth, or in person, whatever it is, you can filter out uh, therapists in, in that way as well. 
And as we come to the end of riding this short wave, is there anything else that we should know about moral injury before we uh, hit the beaches? <laughs> uh, just again, a reminder, if you didn't catch part one, moral injury is not PTSD. They are two very different conditions. Again, oftentimes they can result, both of them can result from the same situation, but PTSD is fear-based and it's based on a life-threatening situation um, in which you thought your life was in danger, somebody else's life was in danger. And again, it's very fear-based. You have that hyper arousal, those sorts of symptoms. The overlap here is both conditions, the person experiences guilt and shame. Like you're talking about that rumination, those intrusive thoughts, oftentimes feelings of disgust. But with moral injury, it is a bit different uh, again, you don't have those hyper arousal symptoms. It's not fear based. It's more of that kind of self loathing. And oftentimes, what people describe is that that soul wound because your moral compass is a bit shattered. You're questioning who you are, and your inner narrative does change, unfortunately. So it is important to seek out help. Um, another resource, again, because it can be so spiritually based, is speaking to a local spiritual guide, chaplain. Uh, priest, rabbi, um, or whoever it is that you feel comfortable speaking with. Dr. Cavallero, thank you so much for introducing us to this relatively new yet very important field and making uh, us aware of it. Uh, if you like this podcast, please um, like and subscribe and uh, share uh, to Every, anyone and everybody. And Dr. Cav, again, thank you so much for joining us here on Short Waves Lasting Impact. Thank you.